Hey, it's Todd Duncan. Welcome to the Where Success Happens podcast. Thank you so much for listening. If you love the podcast, please make sure that you share this with somebody that you really want to impact. If you're a leader, share it with your teams. If you have customers, share it with your customers. Also make sure you're subscribed by hitting that subscribe button so you can receive content like this every day. If you screenshot your subscription and send it to success at toddduncan.com, each week we have a drawing and we send out a case of one of my New York Times bestselling books, High Trust Selling. It's a game changer. I want to get into a topic today that um, you may have been intrigued by when you saw the title of this podcast, but I want to get into it from an angle that I think is uniquely um, important to and different from what you might be thinking based on the title of this podcast. To do that, I need to kind of rewind time and I need to go back to October of 2015. And I need to read something to you that I received from one of my clients to set the stage for what this podcast episode is about. Tonight is about courage. It's about relentless courage to be brave and to get to a spot that you are destined to be at. Write your life plan in pencil and prepare to pivot. This email is three days old. Todd, save this to send you right before mastery. Thank you. In the time that we've worked together, you taught me so much about working smarter and being more effective than I have had been taught in the previous 15 years. So many lessons learned. Go plus one. Just get another loan today. There are too many people that do business my way to not worry about those who won't. That's a Jim McMahon off of Jim Rohn. Truth. Release your addiction to worrying about the opinions of others. Get rid of email addiction. Okay, so to be truthful, I never could release this addiction. That's fine. I think most important for me was the discussion revolving around the law of the hourglass and 86,400 seconds per day. Putting in those systems we worked on and you drove deep into me at Sales Mastery Bootcamp to be the most effective I could be during the time I choose to be involved in my business, changed my life and is still paying benefits today. I chose for the first time in my entire career to put my family first and business second or third, depending if it was baseball season or not. <laughs> the clients didn't go away, they multiplied. Debts are all paid off, savings accounts have grown, and the family experience of great and comfortable times has been ours to enjoy. When my wife was hurt skiing last year and was unable to move, I was able to work from home to take care of her needs and had one of my best years going until June of this year when I was diagnosed with stage four cancer. All of a sudden, somebody pushed the button on my business stopwatch. If it weren't for what we'd built together, my family would be in big trouble regardless of the outcome of my battle. I would not be in the position I am now. Disability insurance that I never in a million years thought I would ever keep keeps the bills paid and the lifestyle we had before this. Should the worst happen with my diagnosis, Life insurance will take care of my family for years to come and put a dent in college. Being out and looking back in, originator, being a loan officer is the best job on the planet that there is. We help put families into homes. We are placed in a position of trust and are genuinely able to help people. We make great livings and set our own hours. But I cannot express at this time in my life how important it is to say to every loan officer at Mastery, do not take your time for granted. I, Todd, may not be here tomorrow. I expected another 15 years out of this business and being able to pay off college with earnings. I may not be here in a month or a year. My message to every originator at Mastery is enjoy your family. Take care of your personal finances today. Start today to build equity in your life with your family. I am hoping for the best. I'm planning for the worst. Can't thank you enough, Todd. 
John Jones. So at this recording, that email is uh, now six years old. And I don't know how it impacted you, but it, the reason I, I chose to share it with you is because I want you to understand that for all of us, the certainty in life is that someday we will die. And generally speaking, we don't know when that time will come. For John, when he wrote that, he was 40 years old. Today, he's 46 years old. We just don't know when we're going to get that diagnosis. We don't know when we're going to get that prognosis. We don't know when uh, something might come up that is going to challenge us in ways that perhaps we had never been challenged. I remember in my own personal life getting the call one day from my oncologist that, um, that I had cancer and I had, uh, I had prostate cancer. And I remember the moment he said that, uh, my life kind of flashed in front of me. And I knew that, that this was something that could be um, severely dangerous to my livelihood and my longevity. And also that it could be a wake-up call for that same lifestyle and longevity. And what I'm trying to communicate to you on this podcast is that if you believe in the certainty that one day we will die, you must believe in the certainty that to live life as if you're not going to die, to ignore that as you try to prioritize life and priorities and the things that matter most you're not going to be able to do it in a justifiable and a effective way if you don't take into consideration the obvious, which is plan for the worst, hope for the best. And I know that, you know, I, 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 I got a call, oh, shoot, it was 7.30 on uh, December 14th, 2000, and uh, let's see here, 18. And it was from my mom that my dad had fallen in the middle of the night and was on the bathroom floor. And uh, I hurried from my home to drive up to their home. It took about 15 minutes to get there. And I remember my dad being sprawled on the floor, 91 years old. Um, I did not plan for that day. I know my mother did not plan for that day. And I know that my father didn't plan for that day to fall. But that fell started the downward spiral of the end of his life because his cancer had spread and he had been in a lot of pain and uh, his bones were weak. And, you know, at the end of the day, because of so many fractures, because of the fall and his advanced stage cancer, um, it was hospice and bye, dad, and love you. And um, he had a full life, which is a gift. And oftentimes we watch life short circuited. I'm sure you've had the calls. I'm sure you've been close to those life altering moments. I'm sure that you've watched people that you love and friends, um, maybe cheat life a little bit, maybe go through some of these unexpected um, shifts that can be end of life issues, but they can also be massive wake up calls. I shared with you what I shared from John because I wanted it to be a wake up call and I wanted it to be a reminder because you are going to die and I am going to die. And one of my passions in life is to help people do business well so that life does not become the sacrificial lamb to the dollar or to the advancement or to the success or the accolades or anything that goes along with that. We, have, we just have to understand that there is a moment in time when our life is going to be over. And for me, the reason I'm recording this today is because right now, 48 hours ago, I received this text from John, the same gentleman of whom I read his email on October 2015, said this this past Monday. Todd, doc told me I'm near the end today. Liver is failing and there's nothing they can do. Weeks, and if I'm lucky, maybe a month. You've been such a huge influence for me. The family is in a very good position with the house, house almost paid off, money in the bank, and insurance will take care of them. I just wanted to say, we get 86,400 seconds a day. Nobody tells us how many days. Don't waste a moment. And this is from somebody who just two days ago 
had his doctors tell him, you're at the end and there's nothing else that we can do to provide any life extension, remedies, chemicals, radiation, anything. Anything we do at this point is just going to expedite your passing away. And it's been hard this week because I never like to hear that about anybody, um, let alone people that have trusted you and shared with you some of the, the most inner thinkings about how to fight, how to fight, how to fight. The sons are 18 and 15, how to fight, how to fight. As soon as I got that text from him, I FaceTimed him and we had a beautiful conversation about um, the fact that he has been a remarkable remarkable model of grit. And when I said that, he started crying because that's one of the words that his son's baseball team uses, grit, 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 grit. And I told John, I said, you know, there's nothing easy about this, but you are going to make an eternal impact in your family's life because of the way that you have fought. They have seen what it looks like to have grit. They do have to deal with the reality and the difficulty and the pain and the grief of knowing that your end might be close. But I need to tell you that I'm never going to stop telling your story. That email you sent me in 2015, the fact that I shared that with a couple thousand people at our sales mastery event, the fact that you get to share that with your boys. And the fact that I'm doing this podcast for no other reason that I want your boys and those close to your family to know that, John, you're a remarkable person and you're a person who is attacked with everything you can. I have layers and layers of text messages from you over the last six years, and I admire the way that you have fought. And this world is going to miss you and your family's going to miss you. And your clients are going to miss you. But the gift that you have given them is a remarkable gift. It is a gift that will always impact them and always help remind them that time is precious and that we do not know when our candle will be blown out. Therefore, then, the prescription must be to live every day by design, to live every day as best as you can, prioritizing the things that matter most. To understand the power of compounding, that each and every day, what you do right and what you do wrong, what you do from a position of health and what you do from a position of ignoring health every single day adds up. And if we know we're going to die, then the one thing that must be claimed by us at any stage in our life then we, that, we, that we are is the decision to be intentional and the decision to be purposeful and the decision to try as best as we can to live without regret. I got a text message last night from John and he said, you know, it's been a rough day. I've gone through all my relationships. I don't think there's anything I need to say or any relationship I need to fix or seek forgiveness in. Um, I think I've done that well. And at this stage today, I need you to know I have no regrets. And it's hard to hear. And yet it's beautiful to hear that I have no regrets. And I think that as we look at life and as we look at stylistically approaching priorities and having an understanding that we get to make a choice, we get to make a choice on the drama we accept in our lives. We get to make a choice on what we put into our body and our lives. We get to make a choice on how healthy we want to be most of the time as a proactive measure to attack and insulate any of the illnesses that we know that are out there. We know that accidents happen. We know that people die without notice. We know that heart attacks take people down. We know that cancer battles often takes time. We know that sometimes it's just not avoidable. And sometimes we get the gift of another chance. And all I want to do is communicate to you that I need you to be a John. I need you to live intentionally and purposefully if you want to. Uh, I want you to know that your legacy matters. I want you to know as a listener and viewer of our podcast that I care deeply about the human experience. I want to, and I wake up each and every day and ask myself who's next that might be in the crosshairs of this content and whose life could be altered forever because of a message that I share, or even in this case, a message that one of my dear clients shares.
I want you to know that to live life intentionally and to be purposeful about what you do and to understand that at a large degree, you can shift the direction of your life. You can shift the health of your life. You can shift your finances. You can shift your health. You can shift your family. You can shift your time. You can do so many things that can be miraculous to your entire life experience. And yes, some things just can't be avoided. And we have to deal with that and we have to understand it. But at the end of the day, if you know you're going to die, then the most common sense thing to do is to live life well in the moment. So what can you say no to? Who can you say no to? What are the decisions and the behaviors that you want to create that allow you to take command and to take charge of what you can control? And in the instance that something creeps in that you can't control, like cancer for John, give it everything you can, battle as hard as you can. The psychology of winning, the psychology of staying alive, the psychology of understanding prognosis, those are important factors in how you live life. I was watching a documentary with my wife this past weekend called Heal, and it was a very interesting documentary. And uh, one of the doctors on the show talked about the idea that in every single diagnosis that is complemented with a prognosis, you can decide how to interpret that. And I believe John battled for six years and is still battling today as I record this. I believe John did that because he wanted to be the small percentage that made it through. If there's a 99% chance that you're going to die, there is a 1% chance that you're going to live and somebody has to say, I'm going to be in the 1%. And even though that may not be eventually enough to overcome something as medically debilitating as stage four cancer, it can be something that gives you long longevity and livelihood and, and keeps you here longer. And I think that's what John did. And I'm proud of him for doing that. And as I record this, I want to say to his sons and to his wife, Jackie, be proud of your husband and your dad, John. Uh, he's going to change the world and his fight has already changed your life. And while it's going to be hard and while it's going to be painful and God forbid that, uh, you know, that uh, there is no miraculous end to the story and that uh, John is going to pass away then know that he made a difference and know that he is making a difference and know that even in his absence, he cares deeply about the life you guys have and the life that he's able to coach others to have even in his absence. And we're hoping for the best. We're looking for a miracle. And, um, you know, part of that is just hope, the power of hope. Part of that is um, the world's not ready to, to have him gone. But at the same time, it is to reconcile that Sometimes the story ends, and then in that moment, the next story begins. And that's what I hope for everybody listening and watching this. I hope that you will understand that your story is still being written. And in the midst of everything that is true about this podcast and everything that is real, that you are, I am, everybody on this planet is going to die. And all I want you to do is ask yourself between now and then, since I don't know when then is, what is my best life? What can I do to do it right? And what can I do to live as much as possible without regret? And what can I do to be intentional and purposeful? Man, and if you do that, you know, John's family is going to be blessed. You're going to be blessed. Your family is going to be blessed. I'm going to be blessed. And any of your stories and anything that you want to say about any of our podcasts, you can always send your story to success at toddduncan.com. We read everything and we want to connect with you. We want to communicate with you. And we want you to share your story with us because as you can see right here, right now in this moment, a guy that I've known for uh, probably the better part of 20 years, um, his story is impacting your story. And I want that to be the message of this podcast. Thanks for watching today and listening. Please share this with people that you really, really deeply care about. Carry the torch that life matters be efficient. Don't say yes to the things that debilitate and take away from the lifestyle experience you want. Say yes to the things that make your life come alive. 
and do things knowing that the world needs you and they need your story and I need you and I need your story and I hope you need me and you need my story and our stories matter. And it is with that kind of conviction that I want to thank you for listening to, you know, what is a hard topic? We're all going to die, but more importantly, a beautiful topic. And that is we get to decide in most cases how we live the journey from this point forward. I'll see you on the next podcast. Thanks again for being here today.